Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Today I'll be presenting my single family home construction pro forma model. Now as many of you know, I spent uh, earlier in my career some time in the residential de development side of the business and in my li library I have a handful of uh, single family models. Uh, models for home builders, uh, be it uh, horizontal construction, uh, the lots to the vertical construction of the home itself. Now, many of those models are probably more complex than what I wanted, and I, so I wanted to build something that you as a potential home builder might use to uh, assess the feasibility of a project. So right early on, you're presented an opportunity maybe to buy a lot or, or a neighborhood that comes available and you're thinking of, of going after lots, and you want to, to do some analysis to conclude whether uh, it's, it's, it makes sense, right? So at that stage, you're going to grab a, just a quick back of the envelope model such as this, drop in some assumptions that you know about, about home building and determine whether this makes sense. As such, the model is built with just one tab, okay? Uh, everything happens on this one tab. And the reason I did that is it gives you the ability to duplicate this tab however many times you need. Uh, for those situations where maybe you have multiple homes that you're going to be building in this in this neighborhood, and you could duplicate these tabs and then uh, just create one tab where you roll up the results from from each one of the in, each of the tabs, uh, the different homes that you're building, to come up with kind of a a neighborhood level uh, analysis. But here we have just one tab. Uh, just starting out, we have a summary section at the top. Blue fonted cells are input cells, and so in the summary section above, this is just uh, a basic pro forma, profit, of, profit and loss, if you will, of the project, and then the cash required, both total ca uh, builder cash or builder equity and builder cash net of overhead that you'll be uh, charging to the project throughout the, the length of the project. In this summary, I also have the ability to drop in just a picture of the elevation of the home you'll be building. This is for presentation purposes. You might be showing this to a lender or internally or to, to equity investors, and this is just a way to, to make the, the presentation look better. Next, we have timing, and there are a few inputs here. Timing, again, is, is a, a rough and simple project schedule. The first input we have, again, our first blue fonted cell is the project start date. And I have uh, dropped some outputs so that you can see the results of, say, in this case, the day that, the, the date that you choose. So let's imagine we chose February 1st, and that is a Monday. Uh, the project start day, and, and this and this model uses day periods, right? Uh, so day 17, day 67, etc. So obviously the project starts on day one. And then I have a month and year just to give you a feel for when these things start in terms of months and years. It also, if you were to roll this up into a kind of a neighborhood level uh, analysis, these dates are important because you're going to be needing to match uh, day, month, year, uh, and period for the different projects and so this uh, this table here gives uh, gives you that ability next we have construction start and so rather than choosing date here you're going to drop in a the the day as in period in your analysis and so uh, in my case here i'm assuming 29 days after the project start the project start being the first day we spend money uh construction is going to start and so Thinking uh, those 29 days, what might happen there? Well, we're pulling permits. Uh, per perhaps there's some design happening. Um, so I'm going to call it 29 days. And then we have construction end, right? So the difference between these two is our construction period. Over here, it tells us how long these periods are. So 29 days is the difference between our project start and our construction start. Uh, the 180 days is the difference between our construction start and our construction end. So we're assuming here a six month construction, just a, it's just a matter of doing that plus 180. And that's it. it's actually 181 days if I add 180 because it includes construction start this day 29. So what we might do is go this plus 179 days. That gives us our 180 day length. 
Uh, construction end ends on a Friday, and that's probably a nice day for it. And then we have the home sale. So right, the, the, the construction ends, and then there's some marketing period. Now, it may be as simple as this is pre-sold, and you could close on the day construction ends, which is not likely. There's likely to be some sort of inspection that happens, maybe in a, a reappraisal at that point. So you'll need some period. I'm going to call it 90 days. Again, uh, this marketing period begins on the day construction ends and ends on the date that the home sells. Uh, so home sale would be the home closing. And in fact, uh, now that I see that, I think I'm going to, before I upload this, I'm going to call this home closing. Okay, I think that did makes that make more sense. And then this tells us the total project length, roughly 300 days. So, you know, we're right around 90, uh, a little bit more than uh, nine, I'm sorry, nine months. Uh, and that seems like a reasonable construction period for a single family home like this. So then we have project description. This is where we're going to, where we're going to drop in things like the name of the neighborhood, maybe the lot block, the size of the lot, uh, the address, city, state, etc. Again, for informational purposes. Then we drop in the home plan name. So each one of our, our homes might have a, a name or the plan has a name, so that's the name. And then you choose, uh, call this, you know, the store, I'm calling it stories here, but it's really like the type of home from a single story, two story, single story with a basement, two story with a basement. You can add or change this. In fact, if you wanna change this to type, and, and, and again, this is just for dis descriptive purposes, but if you want to change what, hap what comes up in this dropdown menu, you come down here to data validation, and you change these inputs. And if you want to add more, you just simply uh, select the row, uh, right click and put insert. And as you insert that, that will then insert a, um, a new option here and maybe we'll call this uh, two and a half story, something like that, all right. Um, I don't know, whatever. So two and a half story. So when you come up to this drop down menu now, two and a half story is there. Then we have finished and unfinished square footage. Uh, different builders have different um, um, conventions for what they consider finished versus unfinished. In my case here, unfinished does not include garage. So when I say finished, neither of these include the garage, by the way. So when I think about my finished square footage, that is um, finished but excluding the garage. Unfinished would be basement square footage that comes unfinished, but we're building out a basement and a buyer could finish in the future, maybe a, a bonus room that's unfinished. Uh, but then when I when I assume my building cost below, it's going to have a, some, some assumption that the garage is part of that. So uh, then we drop in bedrooms, bathrooms, and the garage. Again, this is just for informational purposes. It doesn't flow through to the financials. Next, we have project costs. We have our lot price. Uh, it's just a dollar amount. And then that's going to tell us what percentage the lot price is of the total project cost. Then we have design and engineering. This would also include our um, so this would write our plans, any engineering um, that would go into uh, the design. Uh, this would include our permits, any uh, city, county, um, et cetera, fees, impact fees, whatever, right? So this 4,500 probably really light here, but I'm just gonna call it 4,500 for, for now. Then we have finished square footage building costs. Now what this, number is, is it takes this per square foot, 75 bucks a foot, and it's gonna multiply it by this finished. And now in my assumption here, the garage is built into this number. Okay, even though the garage square footage isn't included here, the garage is built in the $75 per square foot number. And, the, and again, the thinking is, I, I know what it cost me to build a 2,500 square foot home, excluding lot, excluding overhead, uh, excluding profit, excluding marketing fees, that would be maybe realtor fees, excluding closing costs, right? So kind of my hard costs for a 2,500 square foot home. And that's why I drop in here. I'm gonna call it 75 bucks a foot. 75 a foot times 2,200 square feet gives me $165,000, just hard building costs. But then I have this unfin unfinished square footage. 
And that does have, uh, you know, there's less costs involved there. So in this case, I didn't include any unfinished square footage. I would imagine in most cases that, that, would, uh, that would be the situation. Uh, but here, so I left it at, at 25 times zero is giving us zero. Then we have overhead, and that's a percentage of our hard costs. Okay, so I'm going to call it 10%. Uh, some will have higher. Uh, and again, that's just a percentage of, of these hard costs. Then we have uh, other costs. And this was where you might include really anything else that, that doesn't fall within these other buckets. Um, one example would be staging. Uh, so if this is a spec, you probably want to put some furniture in there to stage it. And, and so I'll call it 4,500. Now keep in mind, when, when we're looking at debt, debt is a percentage of uh, hard costs, uh, lot, lot design, hard costs, and overhead in this case. It does not, it does not include other costs. So that's why I put non-financeable. Financeable. So then we have finance costs. And these would be a combination of any origination fees uh, when you're taking out a construction loan together with the construction interest during the period. And those are calculated first. This uh, value here is the interest rate charge. I'm just going to put 6%. And that's an annual rate. Now, how it's calculated, though, it's actually calculated on a daily basis, which uh, I think most lenders would, would compound on a monthly basis. So just keep that in mind. I, it's not going to have a huge impact, but uh, the daily compounding will charge a little bit more than, uh, than probably what happens in practice. And then we have uh, this number here uh, is the fee charged. And I have a formula in here that takes the debt and multiplies it in this case by one and a half percent. So uh, you'll either, you know, just drop in a, a round number or you can do a calculation like that. And then what happens is this is going to calculate based on uh, all of our other assumptions, timing, um, uh, you know, costs, the loan amount, et cetera. It will automatically calculate right here your finance costs, which again is a sum of your interest plus fees. Then we have marketing. Again, this is likely real estate commissions. I put 6%, and that is 6% of the sales price. Then we have closing costs. And that in, in is, a, again, a percentage of your sales price. And then we sum all those. And in this case, it's 290, just short of 295,000. I notice an error. This isn't adding up to 100% because this needs to be copied down. Okay. And that will be corrected in the model that I upload. So we have our total project costs. And then we move to the home sale pro forma. Now you, you'll notice this is very similar to what we saw up top in the summary because it essentially is. But there is one input and that's your, your home price. So what will you sell this home for at the end of the period? Uh, and then I have right here, it tells you how, how many days you've assumed up in your timing. This is going to take the sell from... Uh, construction end to closing date. So in this case, I just used a nice round 150 bucks a square foot. Uh, then we have all of the costs above, somewhat summarized, uh, down to marketing, and then it, it takes the difference between the home sales and your cost, and that gives you 35,171. Then it tells you your margin, which is your net profit profit divided by the sales price, right? Finally, we have sources and uses. Uh, this is calculating the, the where the cash is going to come in to cover your expenses, right? So your sources would be debt, uh, equity, in this case, interest, interest reserve, and then proceeds from closing. And a debt is a calculation of the hard costs, land, design, and overhead at some percentage of those, right? So that loan to cost. And in this case, I put 90. Uh, you can change that to 85. And when you do that, obviously, it'll, you'll have to come up with more cash or more equity. So in this case, I'm going to call it 90. Uh, we then have an interest reserve, which 
is part of the loan, but I separate out from the the loan amount on your total cost, so so that uh, you get a feel for how much uh, of your loan is the actual interest reserve itself. Then we have proceeds from closing, and the reason this is separated out is this is uh, right your real estate commissions, your closing costs that happen at closing. You don't have to come up with cash for this, uh, but it is accounted for because it's netted out essentially simultaneously at closing. And then we have the builder equity. That's the amount of cash you'll have to come in with. Uh, first, the total, and then the difference between the overhead that you're charging to the project. If you're a smaller builder, right, uh, this may be just simply a salary to yourself. If you're a larger builder, this is going to cover uh, your larger, you know, that, that nut, uh, your overhead. And so this is the net of overhead, 13600 um, with an overhead included, uh, your total equity that you'll need to come in with is 30100 in this case. And then we have uses, which is just a mirror image of these costs here. And again, those are the total costs you have uh, to the project. Obviously, your sources should match your uses. If they don't, then uh, you're either going to be short on cash or, the, well, there's something wrong with the model for one, but uh, uh, you'll need, you need your sources to match your uses. And then finally, data validation, which we discussed before. Now, you'll notice in this section here, the, the calculations aren't included. Now, if you want to see the calculations, you either come up, there's this little plus button, you can click that, or even easier, press this 2, and that opens up the calculations off to the right. And then there's an air check that confirms to you that the sum of all of these cash flows in each, one, each row here equals your uh, inputted amount off to the left here. And if there were an error, and there shouldn't be, uh, this is more for my purposes uh, as I'm modeling this out, but if there were an error, like for instance, if we were to hard code something here, this value turns red. Uh, and that alerts me that uh, there is an error in this. But all of them are black, uh, all of them match up correctly, and so the assumption is at least uh, in, in you know, my way of uh, modeling this, that there aren't errors, that uh, the cash flows in these sections here are matching up with the total that we're uh, inputting off to the left here. And then you can close this by pressing this one button here. We close those up. And there you have it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And thanks for watching.